somebody from your that you've read, somebody who is a civic leader, uh, somebody who um, imagined politics to be better. Um, this could be somebody historical from history. This could be somebody in your community that's doing civic action and civic imagination, and civic leadership. This could be somebody who is maybe a mythology. Maybe it's somebody who is um, a religious leader from the past. Somebody, so please share. Uh, anybody who has been, has practiced civic leadership in a way that you feel uh, was powerful to you, okay? Uh, and then that's, as, you're share, as you guys all are sharing that, I have to share uh, how in my study of political activism, so, socioeconomic activism, education, healthcare, ecological activism, and looking at all the spaces of activism, how, how important it is to imagine where we want to go and how that relates to resilience and mitigates burnout. Because a lot of us who care, we also have to sit in what is. And when things don't change as fast as we would like, we, it causes a lot of grief. It causes a lot of emotions that kind of sometimes prevent us to invent, prevent us from being collaborative and cooperative, also prevent us from being compassionate. Um, really why we are here on this planet, to be altruistic, to be communal, that's where we have the most joy. However, when we're feeling like things are never gonna change, when we are feeling like things are just gonna, always gonna be like this, that really hinders us. So let's do something really quick, another really quick examination and practice of imagination of civic imagination is first starting with our inner civic. So if you can, take a few moments to maybe close your eyes and take some deep breaths. One of my favorite ways to breathe is to breathe in and to just like a sigh. The sigh doesn't have to be loud either. It can be like, just a little bit of a sigh, just to express that feeling and, and just keep breathing deeply. You can sigh, continue sighing if you like or not. And my invitation is to imagine, to imagine your body and imagine all of your cells in your body and all the cells in the body, how much they are cooperating to imagine your heart cells and the community of heart cells, the community of liver cells, the community of brain nerve nerve cells throughout not just in your brain but through your spine throughout your body and imagine any other systems that you would like your skin the microorganisms in the gut that are cooperating and helping to digest and process things that you ate or things that we breathe and to just imagine for a moment how cooperative how beautifully civic you are that you are a civic organism that all of these organisms are inside of you are cooperating. They're transferring resources where they're needed so that you can be healthier, so that you can heal. Maybe imagine a little bit about how that, how that homeostasis feels within you. So when you're breathing deeply and you're noticing that this balancing is happening, this balancing of resources, this balancing of needs, this balancing of overabundance, and how the cells in your body and throughout your body are, are incredibly faithful and trust each other. Many of them don't even know what the other cells do because they do a different thing, but they trust. The heart cells trust the liver cells and the liver cells trust the lung cells. And just imagining this civic process within yourself. And you can keep imagining if you would like, I'm gonna keep the talk going. But my intention to bring this into your space and awareness is to first start within yourself and ourselves. Let us start to understand that we have to be civic within our bodies. We have to eat civically for ourselves within our bodies. We have to digest content and information wisely because we are a, a whole, we're, we're an entire shared governance system within our whole body. And then when we interact with other people, we now start to fractalize and become cells ourselves. So invitation is to deeply connect with both 
yourself as a civic organism, but then even beyond yourself. And what does it mean to be, be a civic organism in a larger civic organism? And what is the responsibility of having imagination in that space? As we study the way that our, our, our communities are, imagination is extracted from us uh, from childhood. Those of you who have been fortunate to grow up in a non-Western, non-colonial type of school, that's amazing. But most of us who've gone to school to get a professional degree or to go on to a grad school degree, imagination is extracted. It's, it's punished. It's, um, yeah. <laughs> and then you get into government spaces and it's even more diminished and oppressed in most government spaces, local, state, national, federal, uh, international. So we're being asked now to step in, all of us, to be leaders in civic imagination. It's not just about me. We all have to understand that when the systems that exist are no longer serving ev everyone, that are harming the planet, that are harming those who are most more marginalized, that are harming children and elders and all of us, we must imagine systems. And we are, let's hypothesize that no, no new invention can happen unless we imagine on that invention. We have to imagine as much as we do about what we complaining about what is. We have to imagine into what could be. Because if we just stay focused on what is, once again, I can go back to the physiological aspects of that, which literally, when we are unable, unable to imagine what is, when we don't have hope or faith for what could be, we literally, our bodies diminish, we get sicker, we develop heart disease, diabetes, all kinds of things happens within our bodies when we are unable to process and compost our frustrations with this current systems. So the invitation is to dive deeper into your own, the power of your own imagination, to cultivate the imagination within your community and to actually spend as much time, if not more time, imagining what can be what systems can be, what education systems, what healthcare systems, what government systems can be, imagining, writing about it, talking about it, whatever it is, as much if not more. Can you do that? Can you, you, just you personally, can you imagine what could be possible that would be healthy and harmonious, that would be something that the world and your community from the micro, uh, from the, um, from the local to the global level, what would be harmonious to imagine that as much, if not more, as much, if not more, can you do that? Can you imagine that way? Can you imagine and be intentional that when you wake up in the morning and you meditate, that you imagine what's possible in the day all around the world and even locally, when you work and collaborate in groups to form something, can you imagine what you guys are working towards. And then maybe civic imagination can turn into something that we all are proud of. Mm -hmm.